Hi friends, welcome to this web series on SPSS for beginners. In this web series, we are going to help you learn how to use SPSS to carry out statistical analysis required for your research thesis or any other project work. I'm using version 16 and depending on the version that you use, your interface and functionalities might be slightly different from the version that I am using. However, if you understand the underlying concepts, you will be able to carry out the statistical analysis in whichever version you are using. This is part one of the series and in this part, we are going to get familiarized with the interface of SPSS that you will use to perform any statistical analysis. As you can see that SPSS has got a spreadsheet like view. There are two tabs here, data view and the variable view. The data view is the tab where you will be entering the data that you will be using for further analysis. Here each row represents a particular case or response and each column represents a variable. So let us say that you have a survey questionnaire where there are 10 questions and you carry out the survey and collect 100 responses. So now response of each respondent will go in each of these rows and the response for a particular question will go in each of these columns. So if there are 10 questions and 100 respondents, you will have 10 columns and 100 rows of data. So now let us start exploring more by entering some data in the data view. So I am entering some values here, say 1, 2, one where one represent male and two represent female so as you can see when i'm entering the data so whichever cell i'm entering the data that particular column and row becomes active so here you can see that as soon as i enter data in the first column the first col column name changes from var to var1 similarly if i enter data in the second column it will change from var2 to var2 so as you keep on adding more and more data, the variable names of each column will automatically get assigned to var3, 4 and 5 and so on. However, if you think of if there are large number of variables, what will happen is it will become very confusing for you or difficult for you to remember which column consists of which data. So here comes the role of the variable view. This tab allows you to specify the variable names or the names of each column in the data view in more detail and with more information. So here you can see that again this has got a spreadsheet like view. However, here each row represents each column in the data view. So we saw earlier that there are two variable columns that we have var1 and var2. Now, instead of calling it as var1 and var2, let us give it some meaningful name. Let us call variable var1 as gender. So we can specify var1 as gender. However, there are some constraints in which you can label, in which you can name a variable. A variable name cannot start with an integer, with an integer. It cannot have spaces and it cannot have special characters. So next property of a variable is type so depending on the data that you are inputting your variable can be a string variable it can be a numeric variable it can be a currency variable so there are different types of variables that you can specify using the type property next is the width variable width variable is particularly important for those variables whose type is string so if you specify a width of 8 there will be 8 string characters that you will see in the data view for that particular string variable. Similarly, the decimal variable is for numeric variable, which represents the number of digits after the decimal point. Next, you will see label. So label is that column or that property of the variable where you can specify more details about the variable name. So for example, gender is the name of that particular column or variable. And you can add more details about this variable in the label column specifying as gender of teachers okay so if there are there, is, there are more than two variables in your data set which captures gender what we can do is we can use this label column to specify which gender belongs to whom so say gender of the teachers and say gender of the students 
next is the values we'll come to it a bit later next is the missing value so in your data a lot of times what you will find is that there are a lot of missing values in your data so when you have missing values in your data you can code them with some numbers for example 99 98 are some of the very commonly used codes to represent missing values so when you code your missing value as a 99 you need to specify somewhere that 99 represents missing values so you can come to this particular column missing and you can type these values here and when you perform your analysis during the analysis these values will be treated as missing next is the columns which represent the width of the column then you have a line which is right align left align and central line the last property of a variable is the type of that variable a variable can be of four type so basic stats teaches us that a variable is of four type either it can be a nominal variable it can be a ordinal variable it can be a scale variable or interval variable or it can be an ratio variable here in SPSS there are only three options that are available so to represent nominal variable we have the nominal option to represent ordinal variables we have the ordinal variable and to represent interval and ratio we have the scale variable so I hope you got an idea about the interface of SPSS and how you can enter data in SPSS to get started with your analysis thank you for watching this video if you found this video informative, a like, comment, share and subscribe on our YouTube channel. If you have any specific questions, you can always contact us on our email id admin at the rate pytutors.com or you can visit our website www.pytutors.com.